Islamic. His failure to do so, and given that we have a vice president who is a Muslim, cannot be tolerated. So I urge our Muslims to ensure that their prayers go to the president so that the president will accept this and sign it. I don't think that is acceptable. Mm. Moving forward, my favorite Senegal. Um, destiny has its own way of playing out. In 2021, the Pan-African Federalist Movement held our first ever continental meeting in Accra at the University of Ghana for a week. The secretary for the Pan-African Federalist Movement, Global, is the father of the new president of Senegal. And he had thought that Makisal was a Pan-Africanist. Truth be told, because when the Federalist Movement was born, Makisal was one of the people who contributed financially to support the activities of the Pan-African Federalist Movement. But I have already had my problems with the kind of relationship that existed between Makisal and French or France. And so any time I talked, they said I was a radical because Makisal was supporting our cause. And yet, I did not see that he was one of us. And so sometimes we had these debates. Then it turned out that Osman Isunku, who had contested the 2019 elections with Makisal and placed third, and Amadou Mba, who had placed second. Amadou Mba was immediately corrupted by Makisal, and he accepted appointment and became prime minister. Sonko was invited to the table to join government, and he declined that if he wanted to join government, he would not have contested for the elections, and started mobilizing the young people to see that Senegal and Africa required a new leadership that will ensure that African resources are for Africans, and that we owe the well no apology for our determination to craft our own identity and to leap from our misery to opportunity. Because of his stance, he was virtually not allowed to campaign. And any time he did, there was problems. He disagreed with government policies. He mobilized the young people to see that Senegal was on the wrong path. That landed him in serious troubles, so much so that at the end of the day, they managed to accuse him of rape. And the person that they said he had raped, he had virtually had nothing to do with the person. And they needed to prove their case in court. In court, they could not prove their case. They turned around using the judiciary because they wanted to prevent him from contesting elections. They used the judiciary to say that he was corrupting the youth. And because of his action that he was giving money and other things to give the young people to mobilize, so they had to imprison him. The young people realized that he, Sonko, was their savior. So they did not take kindly to the fact that Makisal managed to use the judiciary to get their liberator incarcerated. So they went on rampage, so much so that ECOWAS that was tongue-tied had no option than to now begin to think that to allow Makisal to run rough on opposition was not acceptable. Don't forget that Basiru, Jomai was the two IC to Sonko. So the two of them were picked up, and they were both incarcerated. And in that incarceration, they were to serve two years. That means that they would have come out of imprisonment next year. That would be after this election. 
the young people will simply not tolerate it. They stood their grounds so much that the president had to grant pardon. In granting the pardon, the president said that, yes, we will grant you pardon, but you cannot participate in the elections. So Sonko was barred from participating in the 2024 elections, yet he contested the 2019 elections. Then he anointed his two IC, who probably is even a worse version of Sonko. But because he is seen calm, they did not understand his forthrightness with Pan-Africanism and his understanding of the issues. At the end of the day, within the two weeks that they were released, it was a popular slogan in Senegal. Sonko is Jomai, Jomai is Sonko, and that message went around. So there was no need to do anything to begin to market Jomai. Because it was evident that Sonko has attached himself and said that if you were looking for Sonko, Sonko is Jomai, and Jomai is Sonko. So our thinking is alike. And they went on a 10-day campaign, and within the 10 days, they were able to mobilize sufficient votes to get 67% of the votes. Within that time, Ma Macron will call the election officers to find out what they could do to overturn because they cannot tolerate Sonko and Fai. Unfortunately, the people listened and said, this is the verdict. We can't do anything about it. So they started massaging, trying to reduce the votes, and came and said it's 57%. 57% or 67% is still a majority win. So a one touch, the new firebrand of African politics were birthed. We are glad that before this happened, we knew that Sonko was going to be made prime minister. Because that was what Joe Mai said. And now the exciting thing is that the father of the Basiru, who initially was tilting towards Makisal, when his son was now imprisoned, realized that Makisal that we said was not good, indeed was no good. So he had to break camps and now come to support his son. And I recall that soon after the elections, I sent the father a message congratulating them on the victory. He said, no, 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 it's not confirmed yet. Because, you know, it was them like, the signal we have picked among our small Pan-African group is that our brother had won in excess of 60%. He said, no, 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 it's not confirmed. Unfortunately, I will not display publicly the conversation between me and his father. And so he said, no, it's not confirmed. Then later he said, if this is confirmed, it will mark a huge leap for Pan-Africanists and young people within the continent of Africa. Because he understands the thinking of the son and understands the thinking of Sonko. And the pair, if they do not allow themselves to be divided on flimsy and useless issues, and they will knit together to work for the people of Senegal, I can tell you that after the 10 year tenure of Basiru, Sonko will emerge as president of Senegal to continue the path that they have started. I am confident they will do great. I'm even more confident that Basiru says that, look, France, stay off Africa. We cannot continue to tolerate France. And France must not determine for us how we want to govern ourselves. And did not mean worse in saying that he was going to go the way of Burkina Faso, of Mali, of Niger, and Guinea. To severe economic relationship with France. And as you know, why would he say that? When uranium in Niger was being purchased at 0 0.8 cents, 0 0.8 cents, and then General Chiani took over from Bazoum, they went into the international market. This thing was not up to $1. Today, that same uranium 
is selling at a kilogram at $200 at the international market. Something that was less than a dollar and sold to France or purchased by France. When they severed relationship, they are now selling the same quantity for $200. That will tell you how France has cheated and continued to cheat, to exploit and to steal, to pillage the resources of Africa and particularly the Francophone countries. In that regard, anybody of sane mind to continue to hobnob with France will mean that you want your resources to be taken at virtually no value and your people will continue to suffer huge economic disadvantage. And so I am convinced that they will work together. I'm even more convinced that they will succeed. Because if you know the thinking of the father of Basiru, that's the original Jomai, Professor Jomai, you will come to the conclusion that they will have people at the back who will be aiding and guiding them. And what a way to start. The president of Senegal has declared his assets, and publicly. That is Bashiru. Bashiru. Yeah. He has declared his assets. He has two bank accounts. He has two ha houses because he has two wives. That's right. <laughs> Do you understand? He has declared publicly on his Facebook account, this is my property as president. So when I'm living as president, you can measure the property that I will have. This is somebody that at birth has declared an intention to run a corrupt free government. This is somebody that at birth has declared that, look, you can count on me and honesty because I'm going to have a distinguished leadership. Do you understand? So evidently, and he is even challenged the other 18 contenders in the elections, that if you say that you wanted to lead Senegal, I, as your president, have declared my assets. This is what and what I have. What do you have? Also declare. Let us as people begin to show that we have come to lead our people and not to come and steal from our people. This message should have gone to Akufado before today. And you see, this new awakening will have a cascading effect on happenings within the continent. South Africa is going for major elections in May. And the story of Sonko and Basiru will reflect in South Africa. It will not be long. Uganda will be going for elections. Ghana will be going for elections. What the young people can do in Senegal, the young people of Ghana should be able to do. And that is why when I tell people that I'm the next president, I don't say it blinking. I say it knowing very well that my kid brothers are leading. People who looked up to me, call you for political ideas, they have been accepted in Senegal. So, bro, you'll be co-opted co again for the campaigns in 2024. Uh, unfortunately, John Mama will not get you. I have benefited from your services, and so I will come back for you. Bless, you have a place to play. And of course, uh, you see who is here to sit down has a major role to play. He will come and tell us that not everything is rosy. But, but I am excited about the development in Senegal. And I think that they have shown a great path. And these new leaders will do well to ensure that the confidence that they will bring the kind of path they will chart will elicit confidence so that many young people across the continent will begin to occupy positions of responsibility. After all, the independence struggle was prosecuted and led largely by young people. At 42, Kwame Nkrumah was the leader of government business. It means in his 30s, he was very active. He was committed to the fight. And so, there were many people like J.H. Mensah, who was um, a part of the economic management team of under Kwame Nkrumah, who was then 27. And so the young brains are vibrant. They are solid. And when tapped, 
will be able to use for the better development and advancement of our nations. Africa is on a path of rise. Kudos to the people of Senegal. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Bernard Mona. But let me remind you once again that we are live on Facebook. We are streaming at facebook.com slash pan-African television. I see scores of you are watching already. Uh, and also on YouTube, you, uh, you can watch us yeah. in 46 other African countries. We are also present, and of course, in some parts of Europe and South America. But let me go to Gombila Sadiq before I come to uh, Mr. George Isi, who's just joined us. You Mr. Isi, good morning. That, you guys see that he has overdressed. I wonder <laughs> whether he's doing well. Mr. Isi, good morning. Yeah, good morning. I trust you're fine. Yeah, I'm good. Great. I'm good. Great. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So let me head straight to Gombila to also, uh, to also share his thoughts with us on the Senegalese situation before we, I proceed to Mr. E.C. All right. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity once again. I would want to use this opportunity to once again uh, extend my greetings to my colleague panels and your listeners out there. Uh, it's quite interesting hearing from uh, vulnerable uh, uh, leaders like Bernard Monarch educating us on the Pan-Africanism and issues that really went on as far as the Senegal elections are concerned or were concerned. However, it would interest you to know that uh, uh, from his analysis and from what I've also gathered, it's quite clear that uh, uh, when the youth are determined to, to embrace change, uh, nothing can change it. And a test example has to do with that of the Senegal. Uh, for instance, if you look at the current president, who is, uh, which is our president, uh, Domaya, uh, we all know what they went through with the current prime minister, Sonko. Uh, the, the attempt by his predecessor, that is uh, uh, Maki, so who intended to manipulate the system as far as the Senegal election was concerned, uh, did all what he could do, the Machiavellian tactics, the manipulation of the, the state apparatus to ensure that uh, Bashiru uh, could not go through or could not become the president. But when the youth were focused and were determined that uh, it's enough and that uh, they, they really wanted uh, President Bashiru, it became so clear uh, that that they fought for it and finally delivered. However, uh, my colleague also indicated to us it ought to have been Sonko who should have been uh, the candidate. But all attempts uh, uh, was well executed. Or attempts were executed to undermine Sonko. Knowing very well that Bashir was his 2IC, he, he gave him his blessing. And together, they were able to, as it were, uh, bring that change and, 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 and incited, educated the youth to ensure that they chart a new part of social development that has nothing to, or that would have little or no influence from the French. And I think that is quite great. As a young boy who has so much admiration for the Pan-Africanism, I think that it is a test kit, an example for the current president we have in this country. And I, I wish to state clear, clearly that you see, beyond President Bashir being a young guy and, and, and trying so hard and has tried so hard to become the, 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 the president of Senegal through their efforts working in, in line with uh, students and the youths, that matters to ensure that victory finally go to where they are or to ensure that they become victorious at the end of the election. It sent a strong signal to the president, his predecessor. Now, in the case of Ghana, let us also state it clear. Mind you, President Bashir declared his assets. President Bashir made the people of Senegal appreciate that he has two wives. He was so candid, so credible, so trans trustworthy. And told his people, I have two wives, that is uh, Hajia, Mary, and then Madame uh, Absa Ferry. And then that uh, uh, Hajia, Mary has three daughters and what? One son, but Madame uh, Absa has no child. Please, she's going to get pregnant. Pregnant. Well, 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 yes, well, we don't know. 
<laughs> one of the first ladies. <laughs> yes, but for the first time, we are going to have two uh, first ladies in Senegal. And for me, it also tells us in future how Africa should be able to function its culture and religious underpinning to its political uh, uh, democracy or political democratic uh, processes. It's very important. Why do I say this? You see, from the onset, President Bashiru and his uh, and, and Sanko, current Prime Minister of that is Sanko, have proven beyond doubt that they are very credible. You get my point? They have shown that beyond the struggle for the people, they are ready to fight corruption. They are ready to let the people trust them. And by so doing, they have declared, especially President Bashir has declared his assets, has declared his properties, has declared uh, his, 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 his ties. But comparing that scenario to that of Ghana, let me state it clear. The mere fact that we need a, a, a youth or we need young people to take out the mantle of leadership doesn't mean we should get people who are not credible, people who are not trustworthy, people who, for want of better words, uh, uh, engage in hiding certain facts that ought to be known by the public domain. You see, in politics, which is adopted in, in development studies, that's what we call the non-disclosure in politics. What that simply means is that uh, sometimes, deliberately, uh, certain informations uh, are shut off from the public. But whenever you are going to uh, a contest or you're going to have an interaction or an interplay between a second party, there's an urgent need that you, you declare certain vital informations for for your audience or your partners to know what is at stake. But in the context of this country, in our case, uh, if you take into consideration His Excellency John Bramani Mahama and that of the other contendants, I can tell without any doubt that His Excellency John Bramani Mahama has the unblemished record that's, I mean, unblemished track record. That has, that has shown over time his capabilities and abilities to restore hope to the people of Ghana and, and, and improve upon the social, political uh, 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 progress of our party, of our country. Uh, the NDC has that track record, and His Excellency John Dramani Mahama equally has that track record. You see, I'm raising this issue in the context of uh, the age. Yes, we should encourage that, but in Ghana, as my my colleague, my my my, my senior brother said, uh, if you look at the context of Ghana, Ghana over the years had proven under the First Republic, Kwame Nkrumah became the head of government businesses very young within the 40s or perhaps the yeah, 40s and subsequently became the prime minister and became the president of this country that simply meant that Kwame Nkrumah became more active in the political disposition of Ghana in his late or early 30s you got that right now you look at Congo let's not recall Patrick Lumumba let's recall Patrick Lumumba of Congo he also participated so much in politics at a tender age and brought so much transformation. These were people who brought credibility to the nation. And these were people who fought for the people. These were people who, who should they speak, you can vote for their credibility. And for me, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama has a viability of credentials, credibility, trustworthy. Someone, when given the opportunity, can transform the country and make us a great country once again. Unlike others who, for want of better words, have, have largely undermined, disclosed certain information to the public. Today, they, could, they are Musa. Tomorrow, they are Timothys. These are people who, for want of better words, are also engaging or practice polygamy. But for the sake of 
politics are not ready to disclose certain essential information to the people of this country. Such people cannot be trusted. And I repeat, the good people of this country will speak on 7 December and our brothers on the other hand will appreciate the essence of the youth revolution. And when the wind of change is blowing, it emanates from the people and nobody, nobody, I repeat, can barricade or stop that chain. And I'm certain, very certain, that His Excellency John Dramani Mahama would emerge victoriously on the 7th December to bring that change and hope that President Bashiru and Prime Minister Sonko is giving to the people, are about to give to the people of what? Senegal. His Excellency John Dramani Mahama and Professor Nana Opuku Ajima would definitely do that to the people of Ghana. And right. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Isi, good morning. Uh, good if we can proceed to that conversation, there's so much more we need to discuss here on the show. So brief your, your, your thoughts on the Senegalese situation. Oh, thank you. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning to your production crew. Uh, good morning to my colleagues, uh, Chairman Bernard Mona. Uh, we missed him last week uh, when when Diomaye had actually uh, won and, and we were expecting him to have given us all the encomiums. <laughs> we really missed him last week. But it's good he's here and he's given us what uh, the Pan-Africanist view of, of, of uh, the elections in Senegal. Uh, congratulations to Diomaye and congratulations to my brother because he was so much uh, keenly interested in what was happening in Senegal, the condemnation processes and all that. Uh, we say congratulations to him and his friend. Uh, let's to my good friend Gambilla. I don't know he, whether he's the Gambilla, the poet. Uh, if he's not, uh, then uh, sorry. We got another Gambilla, the poet. Uh, I've been following his uh, erudite poetry uh, display and 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 uh, choice of words to describe artistic impressions of things. You know. On the mind's eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he, that's his younger brother. Actually. Oh, wow, that's okay. The bill of the poets. Yeah, my oh, regards to him. So after all, I'm not the only one who is growing old. Just to remind him. <laughs> yes, and, and, and good morning. And nice meeting all of you. Uh, the, the election of the young man, I understand, 44 years uh, is good, but it's, it's as a result of circumstances, okay? Uh, I stand to be corrected, but purposefully, uh, it was Usman Sunko who was to lead the, the and, and it's good for the youth. It's good. What it tells me is that we need to be prepared and be on standby. Whether we take the bull by the horn or we are ready to take the bull by the horn. If, if the Omani were, were not ready, uh, when uh, uh, Makisa, you know, frustrated the Sunku agenda, okay, uh, it would have, he wouldn't have been able to take over, you get it. And so uh, by that prepared stance to take over, uh, it's a good thing. And, and it's a message to the youth of, of all the uh, countries in Africa that be prepared, okay? Uh, there's, there's, uh, is it one of these uh, great writers, is it, whilst I wait, I will prepare. When the opportunity comes, I can seize it, okay? And, and that's exactly what uh, Diomani, Faye, you know, and, and and from Bernard Mona last time, I think his father is an astute politician there. And so he's, and, and so far he's like, in the US. yes, yes, uh, yes. Yeah. yes. And, and I think he's uh, one of his political advisors or yeah, something, yes, yes which, which is good. I'm ex I was excited to hear that he's appointed uh, Sonko as, as, as the prime minister. Uh, that is good. And people are asking, maybe uh, Chairman Bernard Mona will help us understand that. People are asking who is going to be in charge. <laughs> but compare the Constitution is the president who will be in charge, obviously. But we have seen many times in Africa uh, and elsewhere where there's disagreement and tangle between the prime minister and the president. In fact, even Cote d'Ivoire. Cote d'Ivoire, <laughs> you remember that, that uh, guy, Guillaume Soro, <laughs> uh, you know, and, 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 and the, the, the president. Okay, so I pray that doesn't happen 
uh, in Senegal. Yes, it's, it's a good thing. My colleagues have said that you standing up to take up uh, have the responsibility to lead your people. It's, it's good. Uh, let's encourage all the young people to who have decided to dare into politics uh, to, to brace themselves to take up the challenges uh, that are in the political arena. Uh, so we go. In, in the Western world, uh, it, it's been something that is commonplace. Uh, you know, David Cameron, uh, Tony Blair, they were in the early 40s when they assumed the prime minister position. Uh, Barack Obama was 48 when he became president of the great, most powerful nation in the world. Uh, there were others that we, uh, and, and the French president was around 37, 38 when he assumed the uh, French presidency. And so Africa, uh, it's time, uh, Diomayo has shown the way. Uh, it's time to galvanize ourselves to also uh, take up the challenges. Uh, Gumbila was trying to bring His Excellency John Dramani Mahama and, you know, uh, if I look at the combined age of His Excellency and his rally, 137 years, it's not a youthful thing at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, we wish them well. We wish them well on the I'm issues. I mean, <laughs> I'm a mathematician. They are trying to do bring, import some mathematics into this. <laughs> but you know, it's all right. You know, because there's a topic that will relate to His Excellency. We're going to be discussing. So then we'll delve into details of matters. But for now, I'm excited about the Senegal situation. Uh, Chairman Bernard, I don't know when Makisal is leaving, but when uh, has he, been, he has been sworn in yeah, yeah, now, oh, our guy has been sworn in yeah, that's yeah. good and on the matter of integrity honesty disclosure a Ghanaian law disclosure process disclosure is there but it's kept in wraps some of us have disagreed with that you get it that look what, what is the purpose of disclosing your assets and it's not made public you get it, but they say the Auditor General, even he will not see it until there's an issue. And Bernard Chairman Bernard Mona raises an issue of national interest, then the Auditor General would then have to go and take the document and open it. I mean, it's, it's not too progressive for some of us, to be honest with you. But that is the law we are operating with. And so you cannot fault anybody. And on the words, what didn't we say? We, we said it. The, the president, I can stand here today and say the president is not corrupt. He's never been corrupt. Okay? So, but other people have their own notions and their own perceptions. Okay? And I cannot you know, stop them from having those notions. Gumbila can have his own perception and notion about anybody in this country, right? So, if you say that, that's a different matter. We'll get to the thrust of what didn't we we'll go read the speech of uh, His Excellency President John Romani Mahama. Go read the speech, inaugural speech of His Excellency Nanad Banco Ekufuado. Go read the inaugural speech of those are the other, the last one, bless. I am happy there's a young person and all that. But sometimes I'm careful. He's just assuming office. We can have all the flowery words and all the excitement and cool. But the delivery in office is what is most important. What policies is going to roll out? Because there's been a case where a young guy about 36 or 35 became the managing director of a bank in Ghana and all of us were excited. Okay? After his term, I don't know. You know, I don't know because there was a, a bank manager, I think before him or after him, a lady from Zambia who did fantastic in that in that bank in Ghana. Okay? But our guy, because it was you know, the fact that you are young doesn't mean you're going to perform. Okay. Let's wait. Let's give him the chance, benefit of doubt. Yes, he succeeded the first block by winning the major listing of becoming the president at that young age. The next thing, the next, is it five years, Chairman? The next five years will determine uh, his delivery. And then, uh, whether the young people of Senegal who need job, who need comfort, who need opportunity, who need freedom, free environment and all that to, you know, move about the activities, will be excited by his performance. I wish him well. I'm excited. Especially because his friend is one of our own. And, 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 and Chairman Bernard Mona, uh, the Caspodian. So, uh, let's wish you. Manifai and his team, uh, Prime Minister Sonko, and the team 
Well, let's see how things go in Senegal. Senegal is one of the big kind of democracies in West Africa and Africa for that matter. And, mm. and we cannot uh, but wish them all the best. Mm. As a better place, can I just add up to no, you? No, 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 no. Uh, no you no, see, you, well, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. No, no, no. The rebuttals can come. The rebuttals can come in the next topic. The rebuttals will come in the next in the next conversation. But, but, I know. But just to add that, you yeah. see, um, when we have incentives, mm. when we have incentives, mm. we have incentives mm. we have insisted mm. from South Africa to Uganda to Senegal. Yeah, okay. another friend of yours is in Uganda. <laughs> that guy. To Burkina Faso, to Mali. Yeah. That Africa's resources. Yes, yes, that's a good. Continues point. to be pillaged and stolen yeah. by Europeans, by Americans, and by Asians. And if you take the extractive sector alone, there cannot be any reason why Africa should be poor. Exactly. There cannot be any reason why Africans cannot find job to do. If you go to Singapore, they have nothing apart from the sea. Nothing apart from the sea. And they have used their sea and their port to such a level that today many people aspire to go to Singapore to go and see the wonders. Do, are we in shortage of sea in Ghana? No, that's fine. Do you understand? Yeah. We are not. And so the first thing the president of Senegal, Basiru, has done is to say, look, we are going to audit our oil. We are going to audit our gas. We are going to audit the mining sector. Yeah. And when we audit the mining sector, we will get to know who and who owns what and what the people of Senegal are getting from it. You see, this happened in Libya when Gaddafi took over. When he started the audit, he realized that oil giants like Elf, Total, and what have you, actually owned in excess of 80%. And what did he do? He simply went to the International Court of Arbitration and got Libya to own about 79% of the oil resources. That transformed Libya to a world-class economy, from a desert to a green economy. Do you understand? And so if just on assumption of office, they have called for an audit of the oil, gas, and mining sectors, they mean business. They understand that, look, we cannot own resources and be poor. And so for me, I see I can tell you that you will not doubt me, will you? That when I say we will do something, we will do it. And clearly this is what they are doing. And I'm just excited about it. You can trust that should Malema win South Africa, there will be an audit in that sector. To be an task. There will be an audit. And it is going to be done in such a way that, look, if you are a good businessman, you do your business. If you are a bad businessman, the state will deal with you badly. I tell you, but it's just a quick up. Uh, you see, when my senior brother was speaking, he sought to uh, perhaps uh, undermine what uh, President Bashirenko would do with, uh, with, with respect to his, as well as his prime minister, Sanku. But however, he has also failed to acknowledge the fact that we've had aged people who have been in the realm of affairs and have also largely filled it people. You understand? It followers. So if he sought to undermine what young people can do, so should, so should he also criticize the aged, as in our case in Ghana. You get when His Excellency Nanado was coming, he gave us hope. He gave a lot of people aspiration that he was going to fight corruption. You get what I'm saying? But today, under Nanado's administration, We've seen a lot of things of that nature. If Nanado had declared his asset, he had told us what he had. He has compared his uh, running mate, or uh, by then his vice president, to have also declared certain things. Declared. No, how many people know knows that? You see, we are saying that they told us publicly they were going to declare that. But my brother seeks to undermine. How did that undermine uh, the, the the youth? And even no, and even. 
The, the president and the vice president. You see, 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 and brought total transformation and development to the people right, of Ghana. Let's, let's, it's quite obvious right. that they need to do so much. Right. And I've never undermined anybody. Right. I just put it down. Right. With respect that to the South Africa. Until they uh, get into office and yes. deliver. Right. Yeah. I, I'll, be, Mr. I'll, 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 I'll wait with bated breath. But right. who can undermine who? We're winning the election. I congratulate but you. But who can right. ever yeah. undermine who can I ever undermine Julius Malimba of, of, of South Africa? Right. He, but he sought to uh, doubt his capability with respect to uh, uh, Sina Benamuna's submission. So for me, oh, if, I don't oh, well, when Sina Bena, when Benamuna indicated that Julius Maliba would win and bring and would audit and adapt certain changes in it, he smiled and said it's not possible. Something like he I said it. to be an uphill task uh, exactly. for him to win. So yeah, meaning yeah, that yeah. he's already yeah. saying that to be an uphill task. We'll, we'll move away from that conversation. Well, that's no, right. that's not pretend. Uh, Let's look at the environment. Uh, he's friend in Uganda. Uganda. Yes. Get, we all love him, but yes. he's going to be difficult. The, 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 is he the former musician? <laughs> yes, yes, the musician. Not to what is his name? Yeah, it's no, 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 yes. Bobby Wine. Bobby Wine, Bobby Wine, Bobby Wine. Yeah. Yeah. Abazel yeah. Sampiali is watching. Good morning, Abazel Sampiali. Yeah, my says, girl. Says that we extend his, his his greetings to all of you on the panel. Ambassador he's my uncle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course, yeah. He's, he's, he's Do I need to remind him publicly? <laughs> Well, he was ambassador to India, India right? Yeah. And, and India, the technology-driven society now, of now, India, now, now, now the world's most okay. populous country. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and and tech is fantastic in India. Yeah. In India, yeah. you know. So I, I think ambassador should come and support the smart schools project that we are rolling out. Right. We'll be talking about it. That's, so that's, that's a big deal to, about it. That's <laughs> actually. Um, <laughs> would, would, I want us to discuss the scholarship issue and then we'll come to the, 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 the issue in relation to the tablet. So the scholarship, um, some persons who we know or we think, maybe, maybe, maybe it's a wrong perception, but these are people that we think, you know, would be able to afford uh, 17,000 pounds and 18,000 pounds for university fees but <laughs> it appears that we may be wrong because scholarships are being issued to these persons when supposedly in quotes we think or we thought that it is rather the poor poor also in quotes once again who are supposed to be the beneficiaries of these scholarships there's um, an investigative piece by the fourth estate uh, they have conducted investigations into this and they come they came out with some names of influential Ghanaians whose children are benefiting from this uh, scholarship secretariat at the behest of uh, the poor Ghanaian who may be needy but brilliant who needs that support to feather you know his or her education Without further ado, I'm, I'll go straight to uh, Gombila to start the conversation on this particular issue. Because you are a next president. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I, I think that uh, ever since this government came into power, it has proven beyond doubt that uh, its, its focus has to do with its people and, and the affluence in society, and not really uh, to serve the average poor and the less in doubt. Uh, you recall, uh, before I address this issue, you recall sometime uh, last year or last two years, there was a similar issue with respect to uh, scholarship where uh, certain MPs and ministers, uh, I think uh, Napu and Ku were, were, were captured uh, for going to Harvard or so. And, and, and I think the, the current MP for Dome, Kwabne and Ku, Domi Kabinya. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think that it has become so glary that uh, the scholar, scholarship secretariat, which was established by Nkuma in 1960, sought to give privileges to the less endowed people. Uh, I recall 
vividly when uh, my late dad uh, used to tell us uh, those days you just needed to leave Tamale or the north uh, when you are booked to come. Questions are asked uh, uh, with respect to why you won this uh, scholarship. Uh, you are asked to justify and when such cases are made and you go through the exams, automatically you are given the scholarship. But you see, in the current dispensation, that is not it. You realize that uh, if, we, if we look at what uh, the fourth uh, uh, estates estate had espoused, it clearly shows that there were students who really needed it. And for the purposes of it, uh, it's, it's investigative uh, outcomes, it sought to uh, 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 prevent or uh, make certain uh, respondents' uh, names undisclosed. Uh, in other words, uh, they had respondents who felt that they were going to give them the right information, but then didn't want to disclose their identity for purposes of perhaps witch hunt. I have no doubt to observe. I also recall when I was a NUCS president, countless that we had raised issues that the, the, the scholarship secretariat uh, wasn't up to tax. It rather gave opportunities to MPP affiliates and people who were so akin to the government or had certain things to do with the party apparatchiks and officials. And we lamented, lamented, lamented. But well, uh, certain uh, political, uh, 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 political instruments or apparatus were used to undermine us. But uh, we, we, we always believed that that has always been the system as far as this Nanado Baumia government is concerned. Today, I'm so happy that, uh, I'm so happy that under the watch of Dr. Kingsley uh, Ajima, the Register of the Scholarship Secretariat, we are being told the things, we are being told the kind of things that characterized the, the scholarship secretariat, which perhaps doesn't linger well with us as far as uh, our country is concerned. You see, Kingsley, uh, let me state it clear, uh, 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 Blair, so let me state it clear that Dr. Kingsley Ajima has proven beyond doubt that he's a puppet of the, the, the government and does things solely in the interest of the NPP and those in power. So I want the average youth the Ghanaians, the parents, the market women, the farmers, to appreciate this discussion and come to the conclusion that this current government is not there to fight or improve the welfare of their people or their people, but they are only there to satisfy the particular interests of themselves and their people. Come to think of it, an applicant applied for scholarship she went to London, an amount of 237.5 million Ghana cities, uh, million cities was, was paid to, to the university where she was uh, studying. After that, after that, my brother, the scholarship secretariat failed to honor its obligation by con the continuous payments. And it had to compel these students to leave school and then adopt certain menial jobs just to ensure she's able to what complement the the gaps and be and be able to f feed for herself and take care of her, uh, her, 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 her her expenses outside now another uh, uh, another respondent also indicated that where he lies in, 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 in London. Since he went, scholarship secretary promised to finance or to support, and he had gone through all the requirements. And again, payments were made, but subsequent payment was halted. Now, it is also imperative to state clearly that, meanwhile, the fourth uh, state led by Malasi had indicated that we had 17 people who are either part of the government or affiliated to this government and have benefited multi-scholarships under 
this scholarship secretariat led by Dr. Kingsley Ejimai. I think this guy doesn't deserve to be in that position. He just doesn't deserve it. You see, he has shown gross ineptitude, nepotism, corruption, and yet the state, the president, has allowed him to be in power. You can't have any conclusion than to say the president knows what he's doing alongside the vice president. And so therefore, they've given him the opportunity to, to, to execute their agendas. And I think that it's very bad. It is very bad. See, if you go further, if you see the amount of money that was spent on these 17 people who even enjoyed multiple scholarships, in other words, they were undertaking a program. This program wasn't done, wasn't yet exhaustive. Then they adopt another program, and yet the scholarship secretariat paid it simultaneously. Meanwhile, those needy and brilliant students who had applied through the requirements, have gotten the endo endorsement, and had traveled out there, the state is refusing to honor its obligation as far as the functions and establishment of, 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 of the scholarship secretariat is concerned. It's also important to state that the Ghana Education Trust Fund, that's a GET fund, which was established under Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rollins, and that Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rollins was established to be the source of funds to this scholarship secretariat. And that was the brain drain of the NDC. And the Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rollins. Today, these were the same people who uh, bastardized it. Who said things weren't going wrong? But in, during our time, during Professor Atamos, John Dramani Mahama, and even when John Dramani Mahama became a president or the head of state, we never saw issues of this nature. We never had issues of this nature. But today, under His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, under His Excellency uh, Nanado, a lot of all, a lot of things of this nature are happening. And yet, yet, government isn't making any, any government is not coming out with any statement or condemning the act or taking the bull by its horn to ensure that those perpetrating these evils are brought to book. I have no doubt that the good people of this country would speak on the 7th of December and these things would influence the youths, the parents, the market traders, the farmers, and will make a decision come 7th of December. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I'll come to Mr. Isin next, but let me read to you what the fourth estate has captured about some of uh, the people who have benefited from this. It says, Dr. Dennis Addo is by all indications an accomplished man. He's the founder and chief executive officer of the Claron Hospital and co-founder of BISA, an international award-winning health app. His, his hospital, located on a quiet street in the affluent airport residential area in Accra, caters for some of the country's elites with deep pockets. His apparent... He's apparently so good at what he does that he was appointed to the board of the National Health Insurance Authority from 2017 to 2020. Dr. Addo, by all indications, is not a poor man. He's not a man in need and is certainly not someone who is so desperate to feather his education to boost his life chances. Yet, when he decided to pursue a degree in public administration in Harvard University, it was the Ghana government, through its scholarship secretariat, that paid 50031 uh, U.S. dollars for his tuition and living expenses in the United States in 2019. That money came from a fund meant to help needy and privileged Ghanaian students to further the education. But for his political connections and social privileges, it is hard to imagine how a man with Dr. Addo's credentials, not to mention wealth, could be classified as needy and eligible to access a government scholarship to the tune of $50,031. There are a host of other um, influential persons here. Uh, we have, um, I've seen a former chairman of the party, of, of, of the New Patriotic Party. I've seen some other people, but I'll proceed to EC, who would also share his, thought, his thoughts with us on this um, particular issue. Yeah, thank you uh, for the records. Uh, let's get it clear. 
that it is not okay scholarships is not for only pure poor people it is not let's get this you go read the the scholarship charter or whatever scholarships are not for poor people alone there is a peculiar arena that the state will want to deem very important of study and then they can award scholarship to a professor to go and do studies in that area the state and the scholarship secretariat allows that okay so please let's stop this this informed position that scholarships are for the poor people alone it is not true okay it is appropriate that people poor people and co get scholarship that's one of the reasons i have been excited about the implementation of the free shs policy because when I was teaching in infant swim school, I've said this time without number here, that sometimes I'll be in the classroom teaching and, and, and the Beza and the team will come driving out people on CMB scholarship, Cocoa Board scholarship, and, and bless. When I saw the, the people, I said, ah, how in God's name, in God's name can these people be on CMB scholarship? And I bet you, some haven't physically seen a Cocoa Board before. They were on CMB scholarships. You get it. So I asked how. So if you read that thing, so it, it really angered me that ah, how can these people, when we vacate, their parents come in vehicles to pick them home? And they were on Cocoa Board scholarships. Okay? Then I asked, so so how? And there are people, Cocoa Farmers children who don't even have any access to that. So these things have been there. It's worrying. But let's put it on record. Scholarships are not meant for only poor people. There are people who can be top notch. But the state requires a certain knowledge in a certain area. And based on that, they can be given scholarship to go. This, the, the research by the fourth estate, I'm yet to go into uh, uh, the details of what, the, what it entails. But look whatever they've put out there they are making the argument that because dr and it does not captured in this but previous one uh as, as my, my friend gombila here uh, uh put out that dr matthew poku uh got scholarship but donable adjoa safo got scholarship to do programs in harvard look they were members of parliament is it a matter that parliament needed certain knowledge in those areas and as such needed people to go and study? How did they get the scholarship? Was it upon recommendation from a certain quarters? We need to look at all that. This girl they are talking about, whatever, is related to somebody in government. This doctor they are talking about that went to do, was study in. You said he was a board member of the National Health Insurance Scheme, true? That's what they said. So why was he? He's an accomplished medical doctor, but they needed a knowledge in a certain area. So he went for another a scholarship to do a degree in a certain area, and an, an accomplished medical doctor to do what degree? Is it postgraduate or master's or what? Okay, let's get the details of that. But let's, I'm putting it on record that, look, scholarship is not meant for only poor people. Anybody who thinks that way is wrong. If the poor people uh, get it, I, 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 I yes. Ask you a question. If you if you go to the official page of the Ghana Scholarship Secret Secretariat, yeah. Secretariat, and you read their mission, it says our mission is to utilize government's funds, get fund, and donor support for the provision of scholarships to brilliant but needy students and qualified workers at a minimum access cost for human resource and development. And qualified workers. Uh, oh, and human, for yes. human resource <laughs> development for the purpose of national growth and development. So, yes. so I mean, so my question is that, yes, yes I, I understand. Yes, it's the not for all the need. I understand yes. the, the arguments yes. that you're making. But yes. sometimes, is it not clearly visible that this person can afford um, the tuition. So no, if, if the person if is in the position afford, to afford it, why do we have to pay for it? No, listen. I'm at NADMO. Yeah. I'm the director of communications for NADMO. 
and and there's a program in relation to disaster management in North Dakota. And they say they need the communications director to go so that he add on to his knowledge. It's not me saying I want that, but because I occupy that position, they feel I need that knowledge for the advancement of the cause of the organization. Okay, it's not my interest to go and do that, but because of the position I occupy, it is mandatory that I go to acquire that knowledge. So the state then will then facilitate that for you to go and do that program because you're coming to use it for the advancement of the organization, not more. Okay, and it happens across. Okay, so these are part of the basis upon which one can get scholarship. Okay, so these are the issues. Brilliant, but needy is there. There's um, other areas where, because of the necessity of a certain knowledge, you get it and you go. Okay, look, I'm a, I'm a still there are some people who have, have had the privilege of being an SRC president, and I know some of these contests. I've been Grassack Judicial Service uh, Judicial Committee Chairman, and I get some of these things that come out. We, we, when Okuja Tuanobo was Deputy Minister, I led a team to meet him on the disbursement of best reason others. You get it? So these are matters that all of us so concerned about if the investigation shows that there's some more practice elsewhere okay that george ac merits to get a scholarship to go study at harvard or in harvard and yet somebody at the scholarship secretariat wants george ac to part with maybe fifty thousand cds before he gets the scholarship these are matters that we need to be worried about are they the case and two is it that so many people who do not merit to get those scholarships are getting the scholarships okay is that what they are bringing out at the at the disadvantage of those needy people who you know are brilliant and would have otherwise gotten the scholarship so these are things that we need to look at this is a government my brother gambila will say well this government doesn't care about the Teacher trainees and next trainees allowance. You cancel wickedness. You cancelled it. And then you are this government has this government has this government has reinstated it. This government has reinstated it and brought free SHS to every student in Ghana. Over 5.7 million Ghanaians have benefited from that. You get it. So the, that is a, a, a bulk scholarship that has been given to students. Do you know, uh, bless the free SHS, do you know it's a scholarship? Yeah? Because the school will prepare a bill and give it to the parent. The government says, instead of parents paying, bring the bill to me and I'm going to pay it. Okay? And add the other things necessary for, for, for the students to carry out the academic work. So, it's good that Fourth Estate is carried out investigation. Look, I thought the uh, investigation that done by Fourth Estate on the SML was bunku. Okay? That's me. Okay, with that SML thing, what's going on? Tell me GVG. You know what benefits we got from them by tracking telcos and revenues that come in? Okay, look, some CSOs have their benefits that they get from certain business and then they go on because they latch onto those things because they, they, that will open opportunities for their sponsors to be able to make more money and continue to sponsor them. Okay, so please. I'm happy about the investigation. I'm not condemning it. But let's interrogate the facts and the details that they brought up, like we did for SML, and we saw that they did a, a whole lot of work there. So let's get into this scholarship thing. It's good. Brilliant but needy. It's not that only that one. There are others, even academia, people in academia have the opportunity to take scholarship and go and study and right, come back. Right, right, so right, these right. are things that we need to learn. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see the process. Let's see. Let's see the process. Let's see. 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 let us see let us see let us see let us that's an NDC person. No, no, right. no, 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 he's a young guy. <laughs> an NDC person. Right. So, so um, let's look, look at those see, things and go right. uh, onto it. If you go through your nooks, profile, check what other was I'll, 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 I'll read a few more things that. I'll read a few more things. I'll read a few more things that the fourth estate has brought out. He says, for example, give to a Warren Mensa. Yes. 
obtained a government scholarship of £18,450 to study at the University of Birmingham in the United Kingdom in 2020 to pursue an MSc in develop Development Policy and Politics. She was awarded a scholarship three years after she started working for the National Service Secretariat as Deputy Executive Director. In the same year, she acquired Berry Ladies Football Club a female football club formerly known as Halifax Ladies, Ladies. currently playing in Ghana's Women Premier League. League. When the fourth estate reached out to her on January 19, 2024, she denied receiving any scholarship. That's From true. 2019, my name has been Gifty Owari Mensa. Let me call Kingsley and get back. I don't know what you are talking, talking about. about. Let me speak to them and get back to you. She later sent a text message that she was driving to, uh, to Sunyani and would revert. Subsequent calls to her did not yield results. Forzi Ramadan, a relative and personal assistant to Second Lady Samira Baumia was awarded uh, a British pound, uh, 17,355 British pound, to cover the cost of tuition for an MSc in global supply chain management at Brunel University in the UK. However, Mr. Ramadan never pursued the course because he claimed he was involved in an accident, accident. during the peak of COVID-19 and could not defer the course. Neither nor the state benefited in any way from the tuition fee paid mm. to the Brunel University on his behalf. He said the school later wrote to him demanding the cost of accommodation, accommodation. from which or from him when he had not stepped a foot on the university campus. I also see uh, no, Michael, no, 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 Michael please, Oforiata please, 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 Jr., please, please, who is please. also a relative of the please, former please, finance please, minister. Please, so, please. Uh, the list, the list uh, is endless. I, I know, I know, I know. Before you go, mm -hmm. uh, uh, can't no, 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 they give you a certain amount, your plane ticket and call, and then you fly. When you get there, they get a letter from the university. You get it? Mm. Before they, they, they disperse the ad, go and ask uh, Dr. Boadu and co. Get fun people. Look, there are people who have scholarships that are NDC, pursuing medical or something that I know of. Okay? That's Sometimes we don't want to talk about certain things okay. on, on the platform. Okay? If Fourth Estate had interviewed me, I would have also given you some names of the other side. It's not about bastardizing. People, no, I, no. If it is so, let them carry out their business. Let's, let's get into it. No, I don't support anyone who will. Unfortunately, I'd have to move from you guys and come to uh, Chairman Bernard Moda to also pick his thoughts on this development. Thank you very much, Mr. E.C. Right, let's proceed. He no, should agree. No, has been no, no, Let's no, I've not kindly, read the report. Kindly, 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 kindly. That's okay. That's okay. I've not read the report. First and foremost, the idea of sponsoring people by the state of Ghana was the initiative of the founder of our nation, Osage for Dr. Kwame Kroon. At the inception of our independence, he declared that the black man was capable of managing his own affairs, and that there was a new African in the world. He moved further to say that we will create our own identity and we will create our own path. In that new identity, Kwame Nkrumah saw the need to industrialize. In the quest of industrialization, we needed engineers. But you cannot have a population and think that they will not fall sick. So we needed doctors. We needed professionals of all classes. Our education in Ghana was not capable of producing these kind of professionals. So as a state policy, the state decided to take some brilliant students and send them across the globe to go and acquire some expertise for the new nation that was born. So people were sent to the United States. People were sent to Cuba, to, to, Cuba, to the USSR, now Russia. People were sent all the way to Hungary, people were sent 
to China, some went to the UK, Slovenia, Slovakia, and many other places so that they can go and acquire some expertise for the advancement of our nation. Probably, to think along, as you see, these people were not needy, neither were they poor. But we required some expertise because we were trying to create our own. And you cannot create if you don't have the expertise. So you recall that new plan was an assembled plant in Ghana. We assembled buses. We assembled charters. We created a Casanoma radio and televisions. We produced our own matches. You know matches. Today we import. We started our own industrial expanse because we had sent people, Engineer Woods, architect Don Atta, Dr. Buama, many other people had gone out of this country. In fact, some in the middle of their studies got the root message that Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown. And shockingly, the new government decided to cancel their scholarships, and those people suffered. Yeah. Some of them, majority of them are alive. You can contact them, I can give you names. Then you can, they can tell you. Some decided to pursue, some other governments did not return these people back to Ghana. Those other countries accepted them and gave them scholarship to finish their courses or program, particularly in the then Soviet Union. And they came back. How we have utilized those talents is another question we will ask. The second reason for establishing scholarships is that there are people from my background, as the Nigerians would say, the Ajapakus, who have nothing. You see, Gone were the days when we used to have the extended family system and family protection. Some of us and our people went to school because the community identified that you were a potential and you could go to school. So they mobilized and contributed. It was a community pool. So they contributed. In fact, the chief or the elder will assemble every community member to make a contribution towards your education. And so when you went to school and you came, those days we used to write letters and post. People's letters will come, the community's letters will come. And you who was privileged to go to school or to attend school, you were the one they will fall on. And those of us who did not or were in the villages were excited to see those above us, that we will wait, letters will come and they will put the letters down so that when they come from school, they will now come and read the letters interpret what the letter says, and also write back, and they will post it. So education was necessary. So even communities started pooling resources to support their own. It was out of that that the state decided that such persons should be taken and sponsored by the state. So there is the issue of brilliant, needy, and poor students factor in the... In this instance, of the fourth estate's investigations. It is not a case that the state of Ghana required those expertise. Yes. And therefore, we sponsored those people to go and acquire that knowledge to come and fit in to do something exceptional. I give you an instance. A three-time or three-term member of parliament for El Emblem. One time, second deputy speaker. One term, first deputy speaker. So he became deputy speaker twice. One was second deputy speaker, and another time, first deputy speaker. Later, metamorphosed from the party that he belonged to, the CPP, and became an MPP member, and became vice chairman of the new patriotic party. And of course, who scheme to smoke out his chairman, Paul Afoku and to take up that chairmanship, and Akufado granted his wish, and he won. He was board chairman of GMPC. 
and later Gapoa. He is a co-owner. He and his wife owns this newspaper, this one, this newspaper, Daily Guide. Freddie Blay and Gina Blay, they own this newspaper. It is the biggest and widest, widely circulated private newspaper in this country. Right? Gina Blay is an ambassador to Germany for the past seven years. Their daughter is a lawyer. And she is practicing in Ghana. Now she gets scholarship. And what is she going to do? To go and then become a lawyer in the United States so that she can go and prepare to write exam to qualify for a lawyer in the United Kingdom. That one is an expertise that the government of Ghana needs. So she's a lawyer in Ghana. But to practice in the United Kingdom, she needs to go and study to practice and to write their examination. That is why we granted government of Ghana scholarship so she can go and practice and become a lawyer in the United Kingdom. Yeah, read your story. Probably I see that has not read the story. No, but 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 I'm telling you, yeah, this, is, this is for scholars. That, <laughs> precisely. No, no, you are saying to study and to that's where I don't know. No, but that. that is why she has been granted the scholarship. Scholarship, they go there and do the other thing no, alongside. She is going to do precisely that. <laughs> Can you read the story? I am not that is the reason. She is not going to study to become a lawyer in Ghana mm -hmm. or to add to, to her knowledge, but to go and qualify into the English bar. That is the basis upon which they she, gave they her scholarship. scholarship. And that is acknowledged by the scholarship. Yes. Yet. Come on. <laughs> Come that, on is, that is it. It's far-fetched. Um, propaganda. Florence Akuno. <laughs> is, that, is that a story? Oh. Okay, okay. Uh, Lucy Blay, a Kale Ba, yes. is a practicing lawyer and a daughter of Freddie Blay, yes. the board chairman of the Ghana National Petroleum uh, so. Company. A former first deputy speaker of parliament and These until recently the, cham the chairman of the, the ruling party. Her mother, mother Gina Blay, has been Ghana's ambassador to Germany from 2017 to date. Her parents co owned the biggest private newspaper in Ghana, the, the Daily Guide. She received 5,933 to pursue a course that would qualify her to practice law in England and Wales. These funds went to the City University of London, 2,283 pounds, and Kaplan University. Uh, 3,650 pounds in 2020. That's okay. That's okay. The point has been well. That is all. It is not twisted. <laughs> <laughs> you, I don't trust the fourth estate. Oh, I don't, I trust, don't them. trust them because but, of us about. You see? And then the guy Lidi, Manasi, he did uh, uh, militia in the heart of the city. What was it? No, no, no. Let him, let him. 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 I'm not even speaking. So allow me to speak. No, you are, the contest is not problem. Which one is the contest? We are discussing the story. Your contest, the, the, the so one there. clearly, I don't have a problem with you. Tell this is if this doesn't qualify for an abuse, then it calls for bastardization of scholarships. You see, I know Alaji, Doctor Mahamudu Baumia. And I know the home that our second lady comes from. Not only was Ahmed Ramadan my chairman, but I was considered a son of the house. So I've gone to the house, I eat in the house, I do everything in the house. Ahmed Ramadan is not a poor man. He is not a poor man. The man, Ahmed Ramadan, that I know, owns several cattle. In fact, he's a millionaire when it comes to. Ahmed Ramadan is the current ambassador to the United Arab Emirates, Abu Dhabi to Dubai. He is the current ambassador. One of his children is ISIS boss. Abu Ramadan, Deputy Coordinator of the National Disaster Management Organization. 
Deputy Director General. His wife, his, his daughter, is the second lady, the wife of the Vice President. And of course, his son-in-law is the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. Who is going around giving charities and supporting people. Then his brother has to survive on Government of Ghana scholarship. It's an abuse. I don't understand that. No, you would not understand. Once it's an are, abuse. Once you are done it, you will not understand it. It's a total abuse. It. Jesus. <laughs> well, if Jesus ever did a panel discussion, you'll be mentioning his name. But evidently, this is an abuse. Because one, one, can I, can I, can I? The young boy is working, since you want to bring that topic, the young boy is working in the office of the first lady as an aide. So struggle is not part of that equation that you are bringing. <laughs> Did you hear that? I, I heard you. <laughs> I wanted to respond to you. <laughs> so struggle is not an, a part of that equation you are talking about. Some other places. But in this instance, I tell you in all honesty, there is no struggle. When such a figure, and he says that, oh, they pay the fees. I was not able to go because I was involved in some accident. So I did a few online classes. It's ended. 17,500 pounds. Convert to Ghana cities. How many students can it finance to go and do masters in Ghana? And even support free SHS. Free yes, that's my masters. question. Yeah. How many students can that amount of money finance Ghanaian master's students, MPhil students, and probably PhD students. How many? That's yeah. How many? 272. Which of our Ghanaian universities will charge you above 8,000 for a master's program per year? So this is the class of our anger. Now, as for the Dr. Ado matter, it is not just as it is published. Look, Dr. Ado got 50,000 plus something pounds for a program that is not related to health, but administration and management. In the same school, Another Ghanaian got the same program, the same year, and that person was given a scholarship of 27,000. How did that man get 50,000 plus? I'm saying the same program in the same school. Do you understand? The same program that Dr. Ado applied for and got qualification for, he was to he was granted scholarship in excess of 50,000. And the same program in the same school at the same time, somebody got 27,000 pounds. Do you understand? Do you understand? This. And this same doctor got to the university in Harvard and managed to get another scholarship from within the university that will give him 55 to 70,000 pounds. My brother, my brother is not ready to can admit. I, can I? No, proceed. Are you see it? Are you see? I like your submission. Go relax. on. Relax. 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 So you I get like double it. scholarship. Where is the spirit of nationalism? to pursue the same program. The worst is that about 27 or more people got multiple scholarships. No, 
about 17 people. But, 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 mm -hmm. so. 27. I saw the seven. But what I read was that I think. Go and read the report well. Okay. 27. You know what they did? You get scholarship. When the course is about finishing, you get another scholarship to roll into a different course. And then we day here. We day here. Where I was sitting the day before yesterday to break my fast, some of the people were of the opinion that we should scrap the scholarship secretariat and actually scrap scholarship. I am of a different opinion. They know. They are well groomed. But I am of a different opinion. Anybody that applies for a scholarship, there must be a publicized name list of all these people who have applied. It must be publicized. If it was publicized, if it was publicized, and where the people who have earned the scholarship were to go, the fourth estate would not have gone through that kind of traumatic difficulties and challenges to access so that they will get the information. That information was not available. And when they went to the scholarship secretariat for that information, they were denied. They were denied until they went to the right to information, information commission. And the right to information commission compelled the scholarship that's, that's secretary to bring the information out. So if you are telling me that they are published, it means that you don't understand. Uh, so because they are not published. Yes, yes. And they went and they got that's the information. Fine. Yes, they are not published. They are, they are not. It is the reason for which they are not, yeah. when so they called so. the deputy director at NSS, yeah. so she, was driving. she said, no, oh, she has never received any scholarship. But she called the director at the scholarship secretariat. At that time, she could pick a call and say, no, I have not received scholarship. This has been my name from 2019. And so it cannot be me. But let me call the director and, and get back to you. Then she claimed she was driving. She was driving and was able to take a phone and do text message. <laughs> you see, it, can't, it, it, it happens. No, how? And so it's against the law, but it is. You know, we drive all the and time so see people. You, you receive the call. Against me, but... You received the call. You told the people that I'll get to the scholarship secretariat and get back to you. They tried calling you. You sent a message that you are driving. And after sending the message, you will not pick a call till thy kingdom come up to this moment. You have declined to respond to their calls. It's a choice. Ghana is rich and not poor. It is Ghanaians who are poor. Right. Thank you very much. I'm reading a few messages. Uh, good morning to you and your guests. Uh, uh, good morning to you and your guests and viewers. If people like the MPP party government and their activists are in power, can a poor man? Uh, I, 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 your, your message is not so clear. Please, kindly. Um, uh, please tell Mr. Isi to observe the posture of Mr. Bernard Mona when he talks on the show. He did not interject or quarrel with, with him. Uh, Ketsi must be observed. Charles from Japan sent this one and says, I should, I, should, I should extend his greetings to you. Charles, good morning and thank you for your message. Uh, this one here uh, says that what does the MPP and its government mean by saying they have done better? Are they telling us they have done better because they have run the economy into bankruptcy or because they are so incompetent that they cannot service our loans? How much is a gallon of petrol now? Is Kinky is not still selling? Is Kinky still selling at one CD under their regime? Asanko from Santa Maria uh, uh, sent this one. Right. I'll do some more messages. This one here says that uh, where is this propaganda from, Mr. E.C.? Uh, Freddie Blay is greedy. Last time he introduced many allowances at his place of work. Okay. Um, Edward Dugbasa says, I'm disappointed in Georgia E.C. for condoning this bad MPP government. All right. Thank you very much for your message. Um, Ajambori Baba from Uyamwase says, Come 
7 December is a communal labor day to remove the, this insensitive, corrupt, and uh, directionless MPP Baumia government. We need Mahama to change Ghana to the Ghana we all want. Mahama Beba, regards to Evans Amuchu Messi, incoming MPF, just at your east. Okay, thank you uh, very much for your message. Um, Azix Elkana is also doing the watching. Thank you, Azix, and uh, thank you so much for your message. And this one here also says that greetings to you all. Please tell Mr. Bon Mr. Bernard that he the win in Senegal is a win for all Pan African movement, and it shows uh, Bernard and others are doing a great work for Africa. And we, the youth, are behind them from Abatwa, uh, Takwa. Kwame Nakrum. Thank you, Abatwa, uh, for your message. Until they are gone, we'll never know the situation of the country. It's sad, but please uh, share me your number for this important issue. Okay. Uh, this one here says, please, I want Mr. Bernard's contact for his advice because he's extraordinary from Clement in Adongo. Thank you, Clement. Uh, Sina Bernard has heard you. Kwablavi of Pokwase says that President Ekufado should stop reshuffling the positions of his ministers because nothing will come out of it. The ministers are incompetent. They have nothing to offer. They can't perform whether they are reshuffled or not. All right. Unfortunately, our time is up. Uh, the time is 10 a.m. At that time, that time, that time. If we, if, if we come early and we don't go back and forth and forth and forth and forth. Bernard, concerning the scholarship, uh, he sought to say that uh, it had, uh, in my submission, we need, we need to establish the fact that in 1960, when the scholarship secretary was established by Nkrumah, Beyond the poor and needy students that were given the scholarship, mm -hmm. the scholarship sought to provide opportunities for, as my uh, my chairman chairman Bernard said, needy and brilliant people, and then people skills and te technological knowledges that we felt that the country as had then never had. Mm -hmm. So there, there was a special but, uh, packages for that, uh, and those uh, advice, <laughs> those advice were given by Kuma by uh, Ata Luis, and that was followed. Now, indeed, subsequently, we are saying that they are bastardizing the system. And when we say they are bastardizing no, the system, I've that changed. you know, look I've at Gifto Owari. No, look at Gifto. No, Gifto Owari. You see, mind you, mind you, right. mind you, we should be, you are not supposed to be sponsorship to people outside the country where you know very well that such skills can be gotten or given or trained in this country. In this country. Thank you very yeah, much. So um, it's been, it's been uh, another no, wonderful no, edition that, of the show. Thank you, AC. Thank you, Gombila. Thank you, that's Chairman Bernard Moda. I'll catch you on Monday. Bye-bye. Smart, smart. African. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the show. My name is Amma Pratt. This is The Couch. It is the Thursday edition of the show, so it's the Hard Talk, you know, um, Current Affairs edition of the show. It's been another very eventful week in terms of the news, in terms of the issues, and we, as always, are very happy to come your way, you know, with our opinions, our truthful analysis, you know, of the issues, and, you know, seeking to understand and make meaning of all the major headlines um, of this week. I will go over them, you know, the ones that we have selected for conversation. One, Alan calls for Christian leader. Um, two, we will not hand over power to the NDC. That's something that Brian e. Champon, um, you know, um, has been credited to have said. And then, uh, Bohu Wolomer's alleged marriage saga. So clearly, a very, very, very topical week, as always. You know, my guests are seated, ready to do action. But before we get into the conversation, let's watch these clips and come back. Stay with us. Look at what will benefit our people. Let's look at what will benefit our people. 
selected our people. I have been selected partly because I'm a Muslim. So I'm selected because I'm one of you. I'm not representing myself, I'm representing all of us. So please support, support. Let us make a difference in Ghana in our generation. Thank you very much for that. In all humility, I want to present to you as one of the people who will be contesting today this country. Amen. As Christians, when you go down on your knees to pray, I want you to pray for God to stretch and anoint the one after his own heart. 